Hey guys, my name is Little Man Jose, and welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be reviewing Resident Evil 1 Remake. Now, as you guys remember, I think Resident Evil 1 is a fantastic game with amazing level design, puzzles that challenge you but don't annoy you, and a story that is ironically great thanks to hilarious cutscenes. Resident Evil 1, for its time and even now, is a ridiculously fun survival horror game. However, the game we're reviewing today is a remake of the same game. So, did it improve upon the original or did it fail in its recreation? Well, let's find out. Okay, the story is basically the same thing, with some changes that I personally really enjoyed. We still have the whole stars team goes into a spooky mansion and finds zombies everywhere, only for them to find out that under the mansion is a lab where they most likely created the disease. But there are some things that make this game's story feel a lot more... Well, let's say mature than the original. I love the original game's story on paper. It's very simple and it adds the right amount of mystery. But the story was kind of weird because it was 1997 and no one knew how to act back then. <laughs> I don't think it's unpopular to say that Resident Evil 1 has hilariously bad voice acting, which did give it charm, yes, but it also downplayed the story since it didn't really feel serious. The remake is different in this sense because it definitely tries to take a much more dark and serious tone. However, they did it in the cheesiest way possible. The voice acting isn't as bad as the original by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still not great this time around. There are still weird pauses that they take. Some scenes are still badly directed because the actors have no idea how to emote in specific scenes. It's, it's weird. Just look at some of this shit and tell me that you can actually take this seriously. Hey Whisker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. Richard! What happened? You're wounded! But you know what? Overall, it's still an improvement over the original. I definitely took this one a lot more seriously compared to the original, despite it still having funny flaws. I really like the new scenes that they added, like Jill threatening to shoot Barry. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And also, Wesker in this game is just hilarious as always. For me, it's the voice. He has the cheesiest bad guy slash cop leader voice I've ever heard. It's the funniest thing in the world. The only thing I'm a little disappointed about is that Barry is not really a meme in this game. And we all remember how much of a meme Barry was in the original. I would go as far as to say that he was the best character because of how meme worthy he was. I also personally liked Chris and Rebecca's relationship in the original a lot more. Mostly because Rebecca never really striked me as a coward. She was more of a gullible rookie and her dynamic with Chris was actually sort of heartwarming. In this game though, they decided to make her a giant pussy who can't do anything. It's uh, it, it kind of sucks. But in terms of new stuff that they added to the Resident Evil lore, well, we have that in the case of Lisa Trevor. Lisa Trevor is a great addition to the game's story and to the overall lore of Resident Evil because the story of Lisa is that she's an umbrella experiment, so to say. She was originally a 12-year-old girl with a mother called Jessica and a father called George. Lisa's father, George Trevor, was actually part of Umbrella. The dude helped build the entire mansion and the underground lab. However, since he was not needed anymore after the mansion was completed, Spencer, the owner of the mansion, decided to kill the guy, including his family. He, however, chooses to kidnap George's family and use them for experiments. They were both given the T-Virus. Jessica didn't react at all to it, so they killed her. But Lisa, she started reacting to it in unforeseen ways, making her the guinea pig for all types of viruses until she eventually turned into this misshaped hunchback monster. For Resident Evil, it's a very tragic story that helps show more of the evil side of Umbrella and Spencer himself. And during the game, you can find Lisa's cabin and then Lisa herself, where after a boss fight, she ends up finding the skull of her mom and she recognizes it. She grabs the skull and jumps off the edge, presumably falling to her death. I really love this new addition. All it did was improve the story and show that Resident Evil can have some dark shit in it. Besides that, the story is pretty much the same deal, so I still enjoy it much the same. I think just for the Lisa Trevor plotline, the remake might actually have the better story. It was a pretty damn good recreation overall. The presentation of this game is night and day compared to the original. Guys, just just look at this game. 
How the hell was this made on the GameCube of all systems? Everything in this game looks perfect. From the models to the pre-rendered backgrounds that just look so realistic that I that just... Oh, or the perfect lighting and atmosphere. If there is anything that this remake excels at, it is atmosphere. While I really dig the empty, normal-looking mansion of the original and found it to be creepy as shit. This right here, this just screams Haunted Mansion vibes and gives it a whole other feeling. The mansion is so dark, with the only light coming in being from streaks of lightning from outside. It's so good. Every area has so much detail in it that I can't help but admire every set piece. And this remake goes for the bigger and better approach, where almost every area from the original is revamped to make it as bigger or as scarier as possible. One great example is the part in the original with the shark tank. In the original, it looked like this. A giant tank in the middle of a room and water from your knees with a small shark chasing you. But in the remake, it looks like this. What the fuck? Dude, look at the sharks. They are massive. Run, tail. Run. Woo. I'm finally safe from the- Oh, fuck! This entire thing was not at all in the original. It is fantastic. It is the best recreation of any area from any video game I've ever seen. And also, we got the zombies. Yes, that right there is creepy as sh- and look at the crimson heads. Everything from their design to the animation of them running to you just fills you with fear. Another thing I have to praise are the cutscenes, which are actual cutscenes now compared to the original, where it was just kind of this. No mouth moving, mostly because you couldn't even fucking see it if you wanted to. And limited robotic movement. But here, the scenes are directed really well cinematography-wise and add even more horror to the scene. I really like the first zombie scene. I thought the original was great and everything, but this is just fantastic. I can't even stress how well done this was. The visuals are just S tier for a horror game. It does everything that it needs to do. I love it. In terms of soundtrack, I don't actually remember much, sadly. They weren't bad or anything, but I seriously cannot remember a single track from this game besides those moments where the music is completely gone. I always love those. But when they try to do actual music, then I personally think the original wins in this regard. The original was just creepy, man, as well as iconic. Nothing against the remake here, I just think the original gave me more of a sense of dread with its weird soundtrack. As for the voice acting, it is undoubtedly better than the original, but that's not saying much. I still don't really think that I think is great. Like, there is still that Resident Evil cheesy ass, awkward ass acting that we love about the series. But they do try at least a little to make it feel more serious. There were definitely less laughs and chuckles this time around, but it's still cheesy ass Resident Evil. However, I hate that they fucking ruined the Jill Sandwich line. He doesn't even say Jill Sandwich anymore. That should be a crime. A second late. You would have fit nicely into a sandwich. But besides that, overall, amazing presentation, Remake. Here we are, fellas. Does this remake make the original game better in terms of gameplay? I'm gonna be honest, guys. For the most part, it absolutely does. Holy c this right here is a remake done right. We still have everything from the original game that I loved. Like the locations, the puzzles, the weapons. And yet everything is also just so different that it's almost like a completely different video game. This is probably the most remake game I have ever played. And I mean that in the sense that this game has the best aspects of the original, but overall is a completely different experience. There are some new locations and there are some locations from the original that have been completely revamped to the point where it doesn't even look like the same thing. Like the shark tank instead of hitting a simple button in the room like the original this time you have to lock yourself in a water cage so the sharks don't murder you because they're ginormous now they look like megalodons and you have to do a mini puzzle to shut down the water that's awesome i love that and speaking of puzzles ho oh, oh, that's another thing that they keep revamping throughout this whole game such as the diamond puzzles in the original, we had the blue and red diamond. You would put them in the eyes of this lion statue to get ammo and one of the crests so you could actually get into the garden. But in the remake, we now have three diamonds. Blue, red, and yellow. And the red and yellow diamonds were so much fun to get because you needed to solve this puzzle where you had to get the diamond before this hawk looks at you. Because when it looks at you, it locks it in place. And in the lion room, you gotta use the blue and yellow diamond. So the whole game, I was wondering, what the hell do I do with this thing? And not only that, but the yellow diamond, instead of giving you one of the crests, it instead gives you one of the M.O. discs for the true ending. When I saw this, my face just lit up. I was like, oh, oh, oh we're gonna complete this game today, bitches. And with the red diamond, I sh** you not. You have to put it inside of a jewelry box. Then you gotta do this puzzle where you complete the pieces. 
After like 15 minutes of me trying to figure this shit out, inside was a brooch, which if you interact with, it turns into a key. And this key has the crest of the Spencer family. So you obviously have to use it on the Spencer door. The same reasons I loved the original are the same reasons that I love this remake. It's the flow. Everything has a purpose, everything has a reason for being where it is, for what it's supposed to do, and I love that about this game. Like, not only is the flow just as good as the original, but it also changes every puzzle from the original to make it feel fresh. For example, we all remember the shield puzzle, right? Well, it's exactly the same. We have to replace the wooden one with the gold one. But now, instead of just straight up giving you the shield key like they did in the original, now you have to do a puzzle to get the key. The puzzle itself was trial and error, but I love additions like this. And another example is the painting puzzle. You know, the one where you have to go in order from the beginning of life to the end of life. From the newborn baby to the old man. And it would give you a crest. But in the remake, now it's matched the colors from this painting of the woman to these three paintings of different people. For example, her bracelet is red, so make this painting of a dude wearing a bracelet into the color red by pressing the switch. There are two sides of each painting, and that's how you can change it to different colors and sh**. So yeah, it's basically trial and error, however, I still found it incredibly enjoyable, and it even made my brain tingle a little bit. Oh yeah, and you guys remember the crest that you would use to, to get into the garden? Yeah, but well, they're not really in the beginning anymore. Instead, there's this new spot where it's an outside area and there's a grave. To even get into the grave, you need to find this arrow tip from this arrow upstairs. But once you're in, bam, there's a coffin hanging and there are four mask holders. Obviously being a reference to the four crests from the original. I actually really like this new change. It kind of threw me for a loop because of how different it was, but it was basically the same thing. You find four masks by doing puzzles around the mansion, like the plant puzzle from the original where you poison this plant. They did change it a little bit in the remake where now you have to do a mini puzzle to turn the water valve into plant poison. Like, it's cool, but it's basically the same thing. And bro, there's even this completely original chess puzzle where you have to move these chess pieces in a specific order so all of them move to the wall. When you move one, others will move as well. So it's all a matter of figuring out a pattern to have them all stay at the wall. It's fun. I love it. And I gave you one of the death masks. The puzzles in this game are just fantastic. There's no other way around it. In terms of control, we still have 10 controls, which I love anyway. But for the people who really do not like them, there is a new option. This option basically gives you 360 degrees of movement, which is cool, don't get me wrong. But god damn it, it messes me up every time the camera angles change. Like, I'm not a giant fan of how you have to keep switching your fucking movement every single time the camera changes. This is the reason why I use tank controls, okay? Tank controls just work for fixed cameras, I'm sorry. And plus, I personally think it makes the game easier. When you can just turn immediately and run away from the enemy, then like... That, that just kind of defeats the whole purpose of tank controls at that point. Tank controls was supposed to make the game harder and scarier. So when you have this, it kind of it kind of ruins that. Like, I'm just saying, man, this is the reason why I use tank controls, okay? I just switched to them after a while, and I did not regret anything. As for locations, we still have the same exact locations from the original and more. I was surprised to see how many new areas they actually added to this game, and I love them. They add so much flavor to the game that I never knew I wanted, like this area next to the shark tank where it has water everywhere and there's this dead shark, but when you climb this ledge, he f***ing wakes up and tries to eat you. So you have to drop this electric generator into the water and shock the sh** out of that shark. This is amazing. Or this cool spot in the dormitory where you find these lanterns that when you light up, it shows you a symbol. And you then use these symbols to unlock the V-Jolt door. I personally think this puzzle is leagues better than the original. Where you just f***ing mash your way into the door by pressing a multitude of random buttons until you somehow unlock it. Well, at least that's what I did. I don't know about you guys. There's even a new area right next to the garden. It's a road that leads you downhill, but you have to solve a puzzle to unlock the gate at the end. The puzzle being these, uh, these spinning chickens. Right before you enter the road, there's a sign that says N, Valley of Destruction, S, Cave of Hatred, E, Summit of Madness, and W, Path of Revenge. The chickens represent different signs. Like, this one is destruction, so obviously using common sense, you would turn these motherfuckers into the direction of the actual title. Like, destruction is gonna go north, and madness is gonna go east. It's common sense, and I love it. I love common sense puzzles in my Resident Evil games. And if that wasn't amazing enough, the road actually leads you to a complete Completely, I'm talking completely original location a cabin in the woods and it belongs to a little girl deformed zombie that knocks you out and somehow chose to not murder you it makes no sense but thank you thank you for this amazing location and underneath the cabin 
is a lair filled with sh** that belongs to the girl zombie. The amount of new, new, new that this game throws at you is a breath of fresh air. I love it. And even the locations that they brought back have different level design, like the shark tank now being an underwater facility sort of thing. Or the fact that there's more doors in the second floor of the mansion now instead of just three. This remake feels more like a reimagining than an accurate representation of how the original actually is. But in my opinion, this level design is just far superior. The new locations not only add more lore, but have amazing puzzles that I get addicted to solving. I'm sometimes playing for two hours or more just because of how well this game flows. I dare say that this game flows better than the original in a butt ton of cases. Real quick before I get on to the next thing, I gotta talk about the crest. So after seeing the death mask, I thought there weren't gonna be any crests in this whole game. Until I found one and I was like, wait a minute. Where the hell do you use this? I was walking around searching this mansion wondering what the hell do you do with these crests until I came across this. In that new location with the cabin in the woods, you can find this grave statue sort of thing that has, you guessed it, three crest holders waiting for you. Once I found all three of those bitches, you best believe I put them in there and then guess what it gave me? The revolver. <laughs> Uh, I, I was kind of disappointed with what I got because I'm not a giant fan of the revolver, if any of you remember. It's only good for the final boss and that's it. But goddammit, man, I actually had a great time figuring out what the hell was going to be behind it. It was more so the journey and not the destination that I really enjoyed. I... Th this game is amazing. And now we got the combat and enemies, which are still the same, but changed to be more fun. Like the shooting. Remember how the shotgun was basically a one-hit kill to any zombie in your path and it felt amazing? Well... In this game, it most of the time still is a one-shot. However, killing zombies in this game is a lot more difficult than the original. And that's because of the existence of one enemy. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Crimson Heads. Okay, so what are Crimson Heads? Well, Crimson Heads are basically super zombies. With a crazy amount of health, run faster than a cheetah on cocaine, and hit harder than an abuser. So how do these Crimson Heads appear? Well, they appear if you do not headshot a zombie. I wish I was joking. Yeah, you all remember all those times I would just keep getting headshots over and over in the original? Yeah, 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 well, that's mandatory now. And not only that, they increase the chance of you missing the headshot with a shotgun. Just to fuck you. This means that if you miss the shot and the zombie's dead, good luck, buddy, because that motherfucker's gonna turn into something way stronger. Now, there is a way to counteract the transformation. But there's only one option. You gotta burn the zombie's corpse. To do this, you need a lighter and fuel, which fills up two inventory slots on your character. So if you are smart and you want to have less backtracking, you do not carry these. You would put them in the item box. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, you would never have the lighter and fuel on hand when you do fuck up a kill. God forbid you're not near a save room, because these fuckers turn fast. Faster than I was expecting. If you have the shotgun, they're not super hard to kill, but if you got no ammo or you don't have the shotgun on you at the moment, run. Just fucking run and hope for the best. This game made me so paranoid with this that I would never, and I seriously mean ever, kill any zombie in this game unless I absolutely needed to. Which was the same case in the original, yes, but in this game, it's upped by the fuckload. I both love and hate Crimson Heads. They add the right amount of stress to a horror game, but they also piss me off and I hate them. However, a change in the gameplay that I really liked was that the pistol is actually usable now. In the original, the pistol was fucking garbage, okay? It would not do anything. In Remake, sometimes I would get headshots with this sh**. What? Oh yeah, bitch, take my pistol. Like, yeah, it's complete fucking luck if it gets a headshot or not, but I love the chances of this happening. And, uh, we all remember Chris, right? Well, guess what? He's actually kind of decent in this game. Don't get me wrong. I will never, ever play as this guy, ever again. However, I did not completely hate my time with him as much as before, especially since he actually has the lighter as its own little slot away from the other six. It made burning the zombies so much easier, so at least backtracking wasn't super stupid, but it is still Chris Redfield we're talking about here. I do not like him that much, and his story is worse, so I can't even enjoy that part. And in terms of the end game, the true ending, well, I'm happy to say that they made it way easier. They took away the stupid cryptic ass you had to do with Jill. Thank you. All you gotta do is make sure Barry doesn't die and get the three MO discs, which is amazing. That's basically the same thing that you had to do it during Chris's campaign in the original. Once again, I didn't have to use a guide to figure it out. Now Chris has absolutely no worth to me because Jill Valentine is here, bitches. Thank you, Capcom, 
for listening to my prayers. You guys are amazing. And that's it for the gameplay section, everybody. And the answer is still yes. This game improves upon everything that the original did with the gameplay. It has a better flow. It has multiple control options. It has amazing puzzles. It brings back both locations and puzzles from the original while also making other old locations and puzzles completely brand new. And it adds so much new, like new locations, new puzzles, new enemies. It's astounding. I adore the gameplay. Okay, so the boss fights in this game are surprisingly fun. We still have the same bosses from the original, like the snake, but we also have some original bosses that were quite fun, like Lisa Trevor, where you have to dodge her attacks and push these four statues off to the edge. It's both easy to understand while also being a bit challenging, and I really like that it doesn't require you to waste a ton of ammo, especially if the boy Barrett Burden helps you out. And we also have the first ever Crimson Head, which was terrifying at first, but hey, he was the easiest boss overall, but I still really enjoyed him. Now, usually I don't like boss fights with the tank controls but now that we have that extra control option where you have 360 degrees of movement these bosses turn from tedious and frustrating to actually pretty decent romps against giant scary creatures plus the tyrant final boss is still amazing i reckon it's just as good if not better than the original it definitely feels a lot more dramatic in this one and that's mostly thanks to the environment and the models they just look ridiculously good overall boss fights are a nice surprise this time around Well guys, looks like you were all right. This game is one of the best remakes to any video game I've ever played. Possibly the best remake to any video game I've ever played. It feels so new and unique while also feeling like an homage to the original game. Almost everything that original RE1 had was improved by the tons in remake. I still do have love for the original, don't get me wrong, I really, really love the original, but I would be straight up wrong if I said that this game wasn't the definitive version of Resident Evil 1, because it is. I gotta give this game a 5 out of 5, masterpiece that made the original game so much better.